How's it going, everybody? It's Waddles. Hardcore Minecraft. Hardcore Minecraft is by far the baddest, toughest, most dangerous version of the game. If you're planning on taking on the Hardcore Challenge for the first time ever, or just giving it another shot, then this is the video for you. Today, I've got 10 tips for Hardcore Minecraft for both new and old players. I've been considering starting a hardcore world myself, so drop a tip for me down below. While you're headed down there, make a quick stop at the like button, and let's, let's go. go. Creating a brand new world is always exciting. There's so much promise, there's so much hope, there's so much opportunity. The world is young. And starting a brand new world is a great feeling, it's exciting. There's so many options, so many things you could do. It's also super easy to get distracted. The very first thing you're going to want to do in Hardcore Minecraft is find a field, find sheep, and take the sheep out. Make a bed immediately before that first nighttime. I highly recommend skipping every single nighttime until you at least have a full set of iron armor. But maybe if you skip iron armor, then just go for the diamond armor. First things first, bed. Always. Look, I know this one is pretty obvious for most players, but like I said, starting a new world is exciting. It's easy to get distracted. Good news for you, sheep can spawn in like pretty much any biome in the entire game. If there's grass, you're gonna be good. I tend to have the best luck in set of plains biomes though, because you can see everything. Once you've found your sheep, taken them out, chopped a tree down, made a bed, and dyed it red, you're good to go. It's adventure time. It's hardcore Minecraft, the stakes are high. Of course, you're gonna wanna jump down into the caves and find good loot, but before doing that, you're definitely gonna wanna get geared up first. If you got lucky with your world and it's even the slightest bit hilly, it's mountain time. Start looking around for those super high up mountain biomes. These mountain biomes are where the secret to success is early game. Inside of the mountains, iron generates more frequently, meaning you could head over to one of these biomes, find a ton of exposed iron, pretty much right on the surface, mine it up, and then you're set. But of course, it's not only iron here too. You're gonna find a lot of coal here, and potentially, if you're really lucky, you'll be able to find emeralds generating here as well. Now, if you have a mountain that is just covered in snow, like you're not seeing any stone at all, then get a shovel and start digging out the snow. The snow is not only super easy to dig out, and right below that easy to dig out snow is gonna either be ice, or maybe more importantly, a stone. Believe it or not, since 1.18, the higher you go in your world, the more iron you should be able to find. Iron is most common up inside of the mountains. Just watch out for the powder snow. This stuff is not good. Following the natural progression of the game, after you have a bed, maybe a small shelter set up, a little bit of food, armor. The armor is the natural progression. You're gonna wanna try and get good armor as quick as possible in hardcore Minecraft. Because you know, if I haven't made it clear enough yet, this it's hardcore, hardcore. The, stakes the stakes are high. high. If you're really just not good, you find yourself struggling a lot when it comes to mobs, then consider making a set of iron armor and enchanting it, but if you're confident in yourself at least a little bit, save the enchanting for diamond armor. Now of course you're gonna look for good enchantments on your armor. Get the enchantments that help you do whatever you like to do. If you like to dive, definitely go for some water enchantments. No matter what you do though, one of the most important enchantments to have in all of hardcore Minecraft is feather falling. I was doing a little bit of research online, and so I'm not really exactly sure the credibility of this statistic, but apparently one of the most common ways to die in hardcore Minecraft is actually fall damage. You jump off of something, you don't realize how far it actually was, you take the fall damage and... Big rip. Feather Falling 4 is a lifesaver when it comes to fall damage. When you have Feather Falling 4 on your boots, it's gonna be almost impossible. Like nearly impossible in any normal survival setting to fall far enough to take enough fall damage to, well, you know, uh, end it. And end it all. But let's say you found yourself in like a really, really bad situation. Like you're really high up on something and you accidentally fall and to make situations even worse, your Feather Falling boots, you don't have them. And actually, your whole set of armor, you actually don't have this too. Well, did you know that there's an easy way to survive this fall? Like, super easily. But let's raise the stakes. So let's go ahead and make it even higher. So there's definitely no way to survive at this fall, right? Well, that's where you're wrong. So this can take a little bit of skill to master, but check this out. We're falling. We get close to the ground, like pretty close too close. Yeah, obviously in hardcore, you don't have multiple tries, but anyways, we're falling, we get pretty close to the ground. What we're gonna do is save and quit. Go back to the menu. And then over here on the menu, we're just gonna go ahead and move over to quit game because you've lost your whole world. This is done, I, I tricked you. No, just kidding. Go back into your world, load it up. You will still be mid fall. However, check this out. If you heard that, I landed right there. If you pause mid game and then rejoin your world, it basically resets your fall height. Instead of falling from all the way up there, I fell from like somewhere in here, wherever I paused the game. Watch, I'll do it again. 
Just to show you it's all legit. Oh no, how have I done this? I found myself in another bad situation. I pause right here, pretty close to the ground. We'll go ahead and save and quit. Go ahead and load the world right back up. Give it a second. And inside of the world, we fell. <laughs> but I survived. It's pretty crazy that it actually works, but I highly recommend practicing and mastering this trick in like maybe not your thousand day hardcore world. Check it out. It works every time, as long as you do it right. That one's pretty cool. That's a nice life hack. You know what also is pretty cool and kind of a life hack? Food. The key to any good successful survival world is consistent food. You're going to want to set up a food farm as fast as possible. To get a little bit of food diversity going on, try and find a village. Not only do villages usually come with villagers and cats, which are pretty cool, but they also potentially come with beds as well. If you're struggling finding sheep in your world, maybe you spawned in the desert, just look for a village. But even more importantly, inside of this village today, we're running around looking for potatoes. Wheat is okay, melons are decent too, but potatoes are great, both early and mid-game. To be clear, potatoes aren't like a do or die here. If you can't find potatoes, it's fine. Just set up some kind of other food farm as quick as possible. You see, here's the thing. On their own, potatoes are not very good. If you just eat the potato straight out of the ground, it's one hunger or like half a hunch. That's not great. Baked potatoes are probably the best cheap food that you can get in the entire game. Now, of course, setting up something like a cow farm is going to be a little bit more efficient and definitely better long term. But potatoes, never forget the potatoes. Potatoes really aren't bad early in mid game. You found your bed, you went to the mountains, you mined iron, you fell a couple times and survived it. You set up the potato farm and then somewhere in that whole process, you got the bad omen effect. That's not good. Of course, obviously, if you don't want to take on a raid just with a bad omen, simply don't go into a village. Drink a bucket of milk and get rid of it. But raids. Raids are actually one of the key components of hardcore Minecraft. Farming the raid is one of the key components of hardcore Minecraft. There are many farms that are great to have in Minecraft, but maybe the best farm in all of hardcore Minecraft is going to be a raid farm. Why? Well, this is why. The Evoker. If you didn't know, you take out an Evoker. Oh man, you've been missing out. You, big time. Evokers are dangerous, but it's worth it. They drop the totem of undying. Okay, uh, look, if you didn't know that, uh, no hate, that's fine, but maybe study up a little bit before taking on Hardcore Minecraft, okay? Uh, the, the big one here is a raid farm. Once you're in your world and established, have good gear and stuff, set up a raid farm. It's infinite totem of undying. If you pick a good design and set it up right, they're pretty safe to use, and you get lots of other cool things too, like emeralds. And actually, speaking of emeralds, I will literally come to your house and give you infinite emeralds if you leave a like on this video. Uh, believe it or not, it's 100% legit. I'm sure you'll see some comments down below confirming it. So uh, yeah, it's safe to say it's definitely in your best interest to leave a like on this video. For life hack number seven, let's go ahead and do a speed round with a bunch of information packed in. Let's talk about Minecraft settings and making the game easier. Built into the game, you've got a lot of settings that could potentially make your life a whole lot easier in hardcore Minecraft. Not built into the game is Optifine. I highly recommend installing Optifine. It's definitely frustrating to be doing something and then random lag spike and then all of a sudden your world is gone. Optifine will help smooth those out and, and at the same time, give you this amazing zoom key. It's built in zoom. You can zoom up on like, let's say the mountains and look for iron. So that setting, unfortunately not built in, but these other ones, all of these other ones, they definitely are. Let's take a look at accessibility settings. Inside of accessibility settings, we have this sneak option. Sneak hold, sneak toggle. If we switch that setting to toggle, and let's say we're over the void or something, just imagine that as the void. All I need to do is press sneak once, and then I'm sneaking forever. Or at least until I press sneak again. Could save your life. We have the same option for sprinting, a hold mode or a toggle mode. Up here we have subtitles. The subtitles are a lifesaver. Show subtitles, flick them to on, be inside of any situation really, and you'll get tons of useful information. So moving around inside of this cave right now, looks like it's just footsteps, which is just gonna be me. If there was a skeleton or something, or like water dripping, like literally anything, it's that extra information down to the corner. You've definitely seen it in YouTube videos, it's amazing. While you're down in the cave is caving, you should be getting lots of information on that subtitle menu when it comes to mob sounds and, you know, things that are going on around you. If it goes quiet all of a sudden and you're deep, well, that's not a 100% indication, but it could be a pretty good indication that you're by the deep dark biome, and you should be careful. Speaking of deep dark biome and this whole darkness pulsing thing, the darkness pulsing thing is a massive part of the game, but let's say we just wanted to tone down, make our life easier. Turn darkness pulsing to off and check this out. When I get darkness, it does get dark. But it's not like as dark, like it's not as dark closer to me, if you know what I'm saying. 
The Rune Portal is easily one of Minecraft's most common structures. These things can generate in any biome in the overworld, just about, both on the surface and under it. But that's not all. Inside of the overworld, you'll find these things. Inside of the nether, you'll also find these things. They're pretty common. Because these things are so repetitive and common, and because seemingly the loot inside of these things isn't like the best loot in the world, it's easy to overlook these things. That's where you're making a huge mistake. Never overlook Rune Portal. So far off, check out this one right here in the middle of the nether, tricky to get to, but Golden Apple. Right there, that's pretty good. A whole lot easier to get to is gonna be this Rune Portal that I found in the overworld, naturally generated. If we check out the loot in this one, meh. If you see loot like this, you might think Rune Portal doesn't have very much good loot. Well, uh, that's where you're wrong. Check this out. The loot table for the Ruin Portal has all of these things right here. Of course, a full set of gold tools, not exactly desirable unless you're dealing with Piglin. Some of this stuff, meh, maybe not the best, but this right there, uh, but this right there, but gold right there and a bell too. Oh boy, enchanted golden apple? Okay, so look, block of gold, bell, enchanted golden apple. Did you know that you can find these things inside of Ruin Portal loot chests? Super rarely. In fact, these things are so rare that on average, if you're looking for one of these items from a Ruin Portal loot chest, then you're going to have to open up 67 Ruin Portal loot chests. One chest per portal. Hey, yikes. But still, think about how common these things are. If you're in your hardcore world, I mean, you literally have forever. Explore around your world, look for ruined portals, open the ruined portal chest, because maybe, just maybe, you will get the best food item in the entire game for literally free. Once you make it real far in your world, it's inevitable. You're going to find the stronghold, you're going to want to go into the end and take on the ender dragon to get the elytra so you can fly around your world. But there's one thing that you need to bring with you to the end. Do not, 100% absolutely, do not go to the end and take on the ender dragon without the potion of slow falling. Of course, good things like totems, maybe golden apples are great to have in the end fight, but at the least, get potion of slow falling. It's so easy. So it's not uncommon when taking on the dragon to get hit by the dragon and... Okay, <laughs> it missed me. Oh my gosh, no it didn't, I'm in the air. When the dragon hits me, I drink the slow falling potion and I slow fall, fall slow, I fall slow. If you recently drunk one of these potions and the dragon does send you into the air, it's no big deal. There's no fall damage to worry about. And hey, maybe even if you're a quick shot, you'll be able to take out some of these crystals from the sky. For this new 1.19 one, while you're in the end taking on the ender dragon, before you leave this place, spend some time, take out the enderman, and get some ender pearls. They're gonna come in handy big time. The ancient city is Minecraft's newest, biggest structure. Inside of the ancient city, of course, your normal survival supplies are gonna come in handy big time. Bringing things like wool to maybe occlude vibrations, another great idea inside of the ancient city. But sometimes, <laughs> well, you see, sometimes, <laughs> uh, whoops. Oh boy, sometimes accidents happen. If you're in the ancient city and you accidentally set off a warden, you know, hardcore Minecraft, you don't want to lose the world. Ender Pearl, that's all you need. Throw an Ender Pearl up into the sky somewhere, somewhere that isn't here across the ancient city. It's the easy escape. After you throw the pearl, I recommend uh, just being quiet, maybe stand still for a minute. You should hopefully be pretty far away. Uh, wait for the darkness to go away, and then you can carry on with your adventure. But, but maybe this time, maybe just be a little bit more quiet. Because the ancient city is so big and open, ender pearls are literally perfect for this place. You can use ender pearls to easily go from one end of the city to the other end of the city in like an instant. You gotta be careful here, like really careful. Even in the best armor in the entire game, full netherite enchanted, whatever, it's two hits from the sonic boom of the warden and you're done forever, forever. and your world is gone. So bring ender pearls. Bring ender pearls and uh, you can thank me later. Because those are 10 tricks that will help you survive hardcore Minecraft. If you haven't yet, please share one hardcore tip for me. If this video gets like an absurd amount of likes, then I will go ahead and make a part two. I have so many more tips. Patron Gang Big Shadow, Fateful Grimoire, Austin V, and Rich, and Gabriel Wide. Thank you so much for the support. If you're planning on starting hardcore, I recommend this video next. Study up on the ward and figure out how this thing works because it will literally end your world in an instant. So maybe check out that. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe. It's been me, Waddles. Goodbye, everyone.